As of today, the Dow is now basically flat for the year. It's actually down just a little bit. It's 10th time in the red. So is it a tech sell-off? Is it a trade tantrum? Either way, what should you do? Lee Munson, president of Portfolio Wealth Advisors, joins us now. Hello, Lee. How you doing? It's a uh, great day. I just got back from Alaska. Alaska. Interesting. Um, trade. Talk to me about trade. Are you worried? No, not at all. Well, I'm worried that nothing's going to happen. Uh, the trade wars are very interesting. Uh, let me tell you all the solicitations that people in my business, money managers, are getting right now. So basically, every wholesaler that sells index funds or actively managed funds, they're all coming to people like me with the same pitch. They say, how can you take advantage of deregulation and lower taxes, mm -hmm. right, on one side, but then avoid what I refer to as the so-called trade war. And, and basically, it's sort of a gimmick to buy small cap value indexes or small cap value lists or anything in the Wait, small cap value. What do you value. mean it's a gimmick? You don't like it? The Russell just hit like a, another intraday record today. It's a gimmick well, to be in, in the Russell? It's, it's a gimmick that, well, put it this way. My clients, we've been very overweight in small cap value since like 2011. So obviously, I'm part of that gimmick. The gimmick is the small cap value that that now is the time, I mm -hmm. guess, versus some prior period. It's basically the gimmick means whatever's hot right now, okay? And it also has a good narrative. So, like, I buy for my clients small cap value for different reasons, right? I'm a factor investor. I'm very long-term minded. I want small because they have high expected return. I want things cheaper on the valuation spectrum because over time, that gives you higher expected return. So I come up from a more simplistic basis. Right now, the pitch is, and you know, I call it a gimmick because these are the same wholesalers that a few months ago were selling something else, mm -hmm. but there's something to it. First of all, when you're, and here's, here's what the, the issue is. If you have companies that have profits, they pay, they pay tax. Okay. And so we've just given those companies an edge. Whereas if you have a lot of these tech companies that aren't profitable yet, they're not paying any tax because they're not making any money. So you're not really taking advantage of the deregulation, lower tax rates on unprofitable companies. And so you look at sort of old economy or stodgier companies, those are the ones that pay a lot in tax. And also smaller companies, and I've talked to you about before on this show, smaller companies tend to do business inside the domestic United States. And so they're more insulated than the big multinationals by definition who, you know, sell all across the world. So you've been would, into small caps for a while, as you pointed out. Yeah. Is it too late to get in now? So like if somebody sends you new money, mm -hmm. is it worth it, getting in now or is it time to wait? Well, let me put it this way. We almost hit 2,800 and I think that we're gonna see new highs, which will probably get us close to 2,900 on the S&P 500, which is, the only index that I really yep. am caught dead quoting, not the Dow Jones. So I would say that we're really right in the middle. If I had cash right now, I'll tell you where I'd like to be. Ultimately, I'm gonna buy that small cap value. Okay. Right? Because that's core to what I do. Do I wanna buy it today? Not particularly today. I think that we can have some softness over the next couple of weeks. That doesn't mean you can't, I, I mean, I think it'll be higher before the end of the year and you can timestamp me and record this audio and say, Lee said, you know, on the 19th of June, we'd be higher in small cap by December 31st. So I said it. So, you know, so therefore, not totally a gimmick. But I would say there's other places that are going to be more interesting over the next couple months. Okay, where should we look? Specifically, I'd say emerging market value mm -hmm. and the EFA or international value. That's actually down for the year. And, you know, international, especially in the value spectrum, it's down, you know, five or six percent. And that little dip that you see on the screen right now, that's the emerging market index. That's all been a, a, a fear of the dollar, a fear of rates, a fear of central banks here in the United States. So I think if we can see, if we can double that year to date loss, get maybe 15% down on emerging markets, maybe get 10% down on international markets, I think that's where the buy is. Okay. But if you're looking just to invest money over the next couple of years, sure, go ahead, buy some small cap value. Gun to my head, if I got a million dollars in today, I'd probably put a quarter of what I'm gonna put in small cap. I'd buy that today and I'm not gonna wait because I'm not gonna wait around for some correction that may not happen. I would just rather be on call for something more dramatic this summer that I don't think will be fundamentally based.
Let's I talk think it's about just going to be blown up steam. The drama of the summer. Because oh. last time you told us that we needed to relax yeah. heading into summer. Uh, and, you know, we, we also talked about 2520, 2500 on the S&P. That's a, a, a little ways from here. Do you think that yeah. we're going to get some of this drama or we just need to be poised and ready for it in case we get it? I mean, OK. If you want me to take a position on what Lee Munson personally thinks and what he personally bets a quarter billion of his clients' money on, yep. I don't think we're going to get down to 2,500 this summer. I just don't think it's going to happen. Feeling Do it. I have a plan for it? Yep. Yes, I'm looking. My whiteboard has a plan for it. But if you're asking me, do you think in your bones you're going to get this correction? Hell no. We we've got some pretty interesting stuff. We've you know this trade war isn't working for the market. Right, it's not bringing the market down. When I say working, there's only one thing I want the market to be doing is going down for a little while so I can buy, right? Because the fundamentals are going to lift it by year end, in my personal opinion. So I don't think you're going to get to see the lows that I was hoping for. I mean, come on, we've got full scale so-called trade war, and we're not even below 2,700 on the S&P. So I've kind of given up hope. So that's why I'm looking at, you know, maybe we'll get a dollar rumble or some, hmm. you know, something at this, with the Fed that causes people to panic with international stocks. So I'm kind of of the opinion, the only real action that we may get that I could actually put money where my mouth is, mm -hmm. is to maybe find emerging markets down 12 or 15% this summer, where I can go in and jam some dollars in there. But I still think that we're gonna have a pretty lazy summer. I think a lot of traders are gonna be very disappointed that they didn't get the lows that they wanted and I think the only money to be made this summer is just kind of picking around, collecting some dividends. But, you know, I think people should go on vacation, hey, like I did. Before, right. if we go to Alaska, uh, before we let you go, just talk to me real quick about Netflix. We got this $500 price target, street high, slapped on it today. Uh, we joke it's like the stock that, that can't go down. It's like uh, Lee Munson, you went, would you touch that? You know, I. I just remember when they first said Amazon was going to go to a thousand back in 1999 or so, and everybody was all bent out of shape. The reality is that I don't buy high-priced momentum stocks, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean they're not real. It doesn't mean that Netflix didn't basically usurp all the other content stocks in terms of market cap. However, I think that the real growth in Netflix is international. And we also don't have enough transparency into how much money they're really making per segment, per movie, like the other stocks got. So, you know, if you want a hot stock, at least Netflix, I mean, we're all on Netflix. Mm -hmm. They're killing cable. Mm -hmm. Do I want to buy a high price stock like that? No. Do I think you, do I think it's one of the few high price stocks that has some game left? Yes. I mean, I don't want to be screwing around with Tesla right now. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't exactly no, we were want just to be talking about that with, one. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be messing around with Facebook with all the regulatory woes, maybe, maybe not. At least Netflix is pure in what they do. They just continue to gain market share, sign people up. I just have a problem with the valuation. And that's not a that's not a sin. Yep. It's just some people like overpriced trash and I like cheap trash. Hey, it's Netflix calling on the other line. You might have to get you got they're, it. They're, all, they're upping my subscription <laughs> your, your monthly just went up. But that's going to be good for everybody else. It'll be fine. I'm sure you'll absorb it. You can't live without Netflix, right? Uh, oh, none of us can. Lee, great talking with you. Glad you're back. Hope you had a good vacation. And uh,